In this video, we're going to be talking about vitamin B3, or niacin. Let's talk about how niacin is created and used in the body. The precursor to niacin is amino acid tryptophan, which uses the precursor of vitamin B6 to create niacin. Tryptophan is also a precursor to serotonin. Niacin is a precursor to two important molecules, NAD+, and NADP+. NAD plus is used in dehydrogenation reactions of carbohydrates, fats, and amino acids, and when it's used in that fashion, it creates NADH. NADP plus is used in is made is used in the HMP shunt or the hexose monophosphate shunt, and when it's used in that way, it makes NADPH. NADH is then used. Sorry, NADH is then used in the electron transport chain to make three ATPs, and you can remember the, the number three is because it's B3. NADPH is used in both steroid and fatty acid synthesis. So let's zoom out. When we have a niacin deficiency, it's called pellagra. That's the, that's the term for it. And the way that you can remember the symptoms of pellagra is just by the mnemonic 3D. And the way that I like to remember it is that we're talking about vitamin B3, right? So deficiency, just flip this B over, and you get the three Ds. So the three Ds of pellagra. The first one is diarrhea. This is caused by atrophy of columnar epithelial cells. The second is dementia. This is caused by neuronal degeneration. The third is dermatitis. And this will present as a scaly rash on sun-exposed areas. Along with dermatitis, some patients will also present with glossitis. So keep that in mind. So let's talk about some ways that you could get a niacin deficiency. Well, let's look up back here for a second. Well, so niacin, as I said, you can get it from tryptophan, but you can also get it from your diet. So obviously, if you had an alcoholic or someone who was malnourished, if you didn't have it in your diet, then you'd have less niacin. Another thing that can cause less niacin is a disease called Hartnup syndrome, when you're unable to reabsorb tryptophan in the, in the kidney tubules. And if you have that, if you don't have tryptophan, then you won't have niacin. The other syndrome that you can, that you can get this in is, is a serotonin syndrome caused by carcinoid syndrome, which is a tumor. And this will is a serotonin syndrome, so you will shunt all your tryptophan to serotonin. So in this syndrome, you'll have all the, all the tryptophan going to serotonin, and you'll have relative tryptophan deficiency to make niacin. And finally, the drug INH, which is used to treat TB, actually binds with B6 and inactivates it. So if you have a B6 deficiency, then you won't be able to make niacin because B6 is a cofactor. For niacin excess, we can actually get this in actually for pharmacology because remember, niacin is a cholesterol drug which um, can be used to raise HDL, among other things. And remember, one of the side effects of niacin is facial flushing. So a lot of patients might take aspirin along with it to reduce the flushing, but the flushing goes away with time. So that's it for niacin. Let's do a quick review just so we remember it. So tryptophan is a precursor to both niacin and serotonin. It uses the cofactor B6 to make niacin. Niacin is a precursor to NAD+, which is used in dehydrogenation reactions, which makes NADH, which can then be used in the electron transport chain to make three ATPs. Niacin can also be used to make NADP, which is used in the HMP shunt, to make NADPH, which is then used for steroid and fatty acid synthesis and anabolic reactions. If we have a deficiency, then we take the B3, flip it around, make it the three Ds, which are di diarrhea, dementia, and dermatitis, along with glossitis. Okay, and the ways that we can get a B3 deficiency is either from the diet, lacking in the diet, because remember diet, so lacking in the diet, Hartnup syndrome, where you don't have tryptophan, carcinoid syndrome, where you have excess shunting to serotonin, and finally, INH, which can block B6, which is the cofactor. And again, if you have an excess, this is used all the time for, for um, as a cholesterol drug that can cause facial flushing. 